Hello, my name's Tom Bliss. I teach landscape architecture and urban design at Leeds Beckett University and until recently I was a member of the Climate and Trees research team at the University of Leeds. I'm currently acting chair and secretary of Feed Leeds and I'm on the steering group of Foodwise Leeds. I'll be talking about both organisations. Feed Leeds was originally founded by the Parks Department in 2011 after activists suggested it was wrong to go on mowing huge areas of productive land, emitting carbon and causing biodiversity loss, which is unkind to the planet, when we needed more local food growing, but allotment waiting lists were much too long, which was unkind to people. We pointed out that back during the two world wars, as all over the country, most Leeds parks had been given over to food growing, thus delivering morale, strong community support and, of course, fresh vegetables to supplement a dull diet of strictly rationed food while still functioning as parks. So the council kindly called together a group of wise heads to discuss the options. Bearing in mind that legally food grown in an allotment can be protected from theft but not sold, whereas food grown in a park can be sold but not protected because the land belongs to everyone. Locally grown food, wherever it's harvested, has lots of advantages, of course. Reduced food miles and associated emissions, fresh, tasty seasonal produce, the sharing of skills and knowledge about plants and the environment, taking people outside for better physical and mental health, community building, biodiversity and a boost to the local food economy. So naturally we're keen to see food growing absolutely everywhere. But meanwhile, we suffer the major problems associated with the global food system, which is damaging the planet through carbon emissions, soil degradation, water loss, biodiversity damage and more. While we chase a consumption model that allows one third of all food to be wasted, to the extent that if that waste was a country, it would rank third behind the USA and China for carbon emissions. One major inspiration to all of us was the wonderful, incredible edible Todmorden, known as Todd, where food is grown by community groups all over the town in often the most unlikely places, with the important proviso that it's all free to scrump or help yourself. One of the founders, Mary Clear, goes further. We don't really care for gardening at all. It's really just all about showing kindness. That kindness ethos has now inspired projects all over the world, but Mary is the first to agree that achieving cohesion at city scale was always going to need a different approach. For a start, Leeds already had a number of Todd-style schemes, as well as people using other approaches, including commercial growing. So we decided to form a proactive network, which could provide critical mass with strong lobbying and educational clout. And this now stands at 86 member groups. There was another dimension too. As well as food growing, most of the group were also interested in the strategic and political issues around food, including security, climate resilience and mitigation, food poverty, supermarket behaviour and pricing, location and number of takeaways, obesity, bad diets, holiday hunger, sustainable agriculture, permaculture, vertical farming and lots of other issues. As my colleague Professor Tim Benton from University of Leeds and Chatham House points out, the global food system is much less secure than many realise. This slide shows the near-perfect correlation between the price of bread and rioting involving fatalities. And there have already been occasions when all the major food production areas of the world have come under stress at the same time for different reasons, most of them climate related. Add the risks to transport routes from conflicts, pandemics and fuel shortages, Plus the way we as a species are exceeding the supportive boundaries of planet Earth and it was clear that we needed to make sure our home city had a robust and sustainable food system. That's a kindness framed as a necessity. Leeds did once have a food strategy but it had lapsed in 2010 so we wanted urgently to help the council to develop either a new one or some other way to address these issues. This is a doodle I did at that first meeting with the Parks Department. And here we are at the official launch of Feed Leeds a few months later, with food being grown in the high prestige beds next to the Civic Hall, and the council lead for the environment planting an orchard in a city park. 
The network approach quickly proved itself. It connects a wide range of innovative and very committed projects, each with its own strengths and opportunities. And when new projects ask for help, or volunteers are looking for supportive groups, or bigger challenges appear over the horizon, we have a wide range of expert and above all kind and friendly people to call upon. Our website also aims to be helpful and friendly. There's lots of advice, not only about growing food at home, even indoors if you don't have any outdoor space, or in an allotment or community garden, but also about starting and running kind and welcoming social projects of all types. We have in fact initiated a number of schemes ourselves, but always for specific purposes. These include Leeds Edible Campus, Willing Wellies, Kirkstall Island Farm and Leeds Rotters. But perhaps the most important is the Leeds Edible Schools Network, which works closely with educational establishments across the city. Most of these are what we call co-managed projects because they typically involve people who are not members of the Feed Leeds Committee themselves, but have come into partnership with us to benefit from our lobbying power, constitution, connections and if necessary funds and even bank account, something we're equipped to provide. Some of these don't last for one reason or another. Some remain more or less permanently overlapping with feed leads and others stay until they've found their feet and then become regular members of the feed leads network. Perhaps the most important of these came about because it became clear early on that while a core group was as much interested in roots in the soil growing as we were in the big political issues, some were only bothered about one or the other. So if a meeting happened to dwell on horticultural matters, the food strategists were bored and vice versa. We solved this initially by creating two strands within Feed Leads, each with its own website, the Potting Shed and the Think Tank. We continued having Feed Leads general meetings, but also additional gatherings clearly favouring one or other of these two new strands. The former quickly developed into Potting Shed drinks as it remains. This, lockdown permitting, is an evening gathering in a pub or sometimes a private house, where people not only meet and chat, but can also bring forward items for the agenda at the next general meeting, which takes place a few days later. Also, in normal times, at least one general meeting per month takes place actually at Potting Shed Drinks, so that anyone who can't attend daytime meetings can be there. The Think Tank has had a more dramatic journey. We started out holding bi-monthly events, usually at the University of Leeds, with the guest speaker followed by a debate. But this was superseded when the Council asked us to conduct an audit of the Leeds food system in preparation for the creation of a new food strategy. One of the recommendations that flowed from that audit was the creation of a food partnership, ideally as a member of Sustainable Food Cities, or as it's now known, Sustainable Food Places. So the Think Tank morphed into Leeds Food Partnership, a new separate organisation which Feed Leeds then joined as the representatives of food growers and to extent activists, though not all growers are activists of course. The partnership quickly hired a food coordinator who led a major effort to acquire a bronze award for the city, probably our most tangible achievement to date, and then push on towards silver. But then colleagues from the food industry suggested that a more foodie identity would help to deliver better penetration in the business sector. As 90% of food is delivered by commercial companies, this made sense, and it led to the creation of the Food Wise Leads campaign. This in turn became effectively the public identity of the partnership. So what are we working on now? Well, the first is larger scale growing. We have two urban farms practising community-supported agriculture in Leeds. That's using both employees and volunteers. One is the long-standing farm in Meanwood, and one is a brand new one in Kirkstall. Plus, there's a new project seeking to bring together lots of smaller projects into a patchwork farm. We also have a very successful hydroponics farm in the group, and we hope to have more as this is one of the more exciting ways to produce food within a city, because you can do it on roofs, in cellars, and on land that can't be used for anything else. Also increasingly hearing from conventional farmers near to the city who want either to move into horticulture from sheep and cattle, because, as we all know, overconsumption of meat is now a major global problem, or to find new ways to sell directly to the local population with box schemes and such like. The second related area is finding better ways to market and distribute produce, especially surplus harvest, something we need to do in our bid for a silver award. 
This involves creating a new fashion for little veg libraries, a new website for hedge veg, an idea from the Channel Islands, and new click and collect farmers markets and more. Foodwise is involved in a range of projects with the most important being currently holiday hunger, plus a research exercise emerging from our work with the Leeds Climate Commission and now taking in the challenges from Brexit and coronavirus as well. This brings the story full circle as it revisits our original goal. Hopefully it will provide the evidence we need finally to convince Leeds City Council and other cities to drive a massive increase in food production both in and near the city. We need to identify both the barriers, such as planning regulations and lack of officer capacity, and how they can be removed, and then suggest steps, actions and decisions which will deliver a future-proof system based on health and sustainability and kindness. Well, I hope that answers most of the questions we were asked by the festival. But just to be clear, how can you, we, all of us, help to make sure we have a healthy, sustainable and above all kind food system in Leeds. First, grow something edible, even if it's just a chilli on the windowsill. And if you've got space outdoors, try growing in a pot, a plot, a raised bed or even dig up the lawn. I did, well, a bit of it. Or maybe volunteer at one of the dozens of food growing projects around Leeds. You can find them all on our website. Or get yourself an allotment. You'll find plenty of kind folk there to help you if you're new to growing. Second, cut down on the amount of meat you eat, especially red meat, especially beef. There's no need to go vegan if you don't fancy it. Just one veggie day a week will make a massive difference. Third, think about food miles and water miles and packaging when you shop. Local is best, but remember that local doesn't always mean sustainable. Plus, we do have some responsibility to farmers, both in the UK and overseas, who rely on us to buy their produce for the time being anyway. We need to let people down gently and creatively. Fourth, try to eat everything you buy and compost all your green waste. Check out Leeds Rotter's website for advice. Fifth, download the Leeds Food Charter, fill in the pledges and then deliver them. Oh, and pop along to one of our meetings, you'd be more than welcome, or just drop me an email. And finally, what does a kinder Leeds look like to us? Well, it's one where people have a better connection with the ground they live on. Because if you're connected with your territory and understand that it can easily deliver enough for everyone, if we just look after it properly, we feel less anxious about sharing it with others and therefore more relaxed and kind. And the best possible way to connect with the soil is to plunge a spade or a trowel into it, pop in a seed or a seedling, then water and tend it until the joyous day when you can harvest the fruits of your labours and share them kindly with your friends and family. After all, we do live on a kind planet. Once you get that, the rest's easy. Hi, I'm Holes and I'm one of the founders of North Star Coffee Roasters. We are a roastery and coffee shop based in Leeds and we essentially sort of work hard to source the best coffee that we possibly can from lots of producers that we work with uh, directly from all over the world. Uh, and we bring coffee into the UK, we roast it and we supply lots of other wholesale businesses in the hospitality industry um, along with our own coffee shop at Leeds Stock and we also have a, an online shop where you can buy the coffee online directly from us. Um, so we start started the business in 2013 and the reason we really sort of started the business was very much born from um, an experience that we had in 2011 for part of my university research for my final year dissertation. Um, I chose to focus on fair trade coffee farming in Kenya. Um, to sort of understand the impacts that um, fair trade had had on the social and economic development of some of the producers um, working in the region of Nyeri in Kenya. Um, and that research sort of took us out to Kenya for a month to sort of walk amongst coffee farmers and interview them about how their lives, lives had changed for better or worse. Um, and that was really the first time that we had a sort of uh, an insight into the complexity of the coffee supply chain and um, you know it really was it was thrilling it was super interesting but it was also uh, 
uh, really sort of, um, it, it really hit home how complex it is and how it can be really difficult for um, the producer, whom we all rely upon for, for the production of the coffee that we all enjoy drinking, um, how they can end up being quite marginalised from, uh, from the actual transaction element of the supply chain. Um, so we really sort of left... Um, University having done the research uh, with a real desire to work within the coffee industry, uh, specifically towards the higher end of the supply chain with sourcing and roasting. Um, and in you know, in all, all fairness, there just wasn't a roastery or a company really in, in Leeds that we kind of wanted to work for. Um, but there was no kind of wholesale coffee roastery set up at that time, which seemed shocking to us with Leeds being the third biggest city in the UK. Um, you know, so we really sort of felt like a responsibility to bring. Um, really high quality ethically sourced coffee um, to the city that we grew up in. Um, so that's kind of how North Star got, got going really um, and I think what makes us unique is that from day one we actually had kind of principles of um, sort of sustainability with regards to social and environmental responsibility really built into the blueprint of our business. Um, we did not start the business because we always wanted to have our own business. It was very much like we saw a need to do something and you know that's kind of how we how we got going. Um, so one of our aims as North, at North Star is essentially to always have a a positive impact wherever we trade whether that's um you know with the producers that we work with sort of encouraging um, responsible environmental habits in their production techniques um social responsibility with regards to the people they look after and employ on their um land and um and then finally you know trying to minimize the the kind of carbon footprint really that our coffee inevitably has on the planet due to the fact that it only grows in the tropics um and we ha we are very reliant on importing that coffee to the UK for us to use it so wherever possible we try and offset our carbon footprint through um, carbon offsetting projects that we kind of contribute financially towards we are always searching for a more environmentally friendly way of doing things um, and ultimately we try really to exist that business um, can exist in a different manner we try to prove that you there's a kinder way to doing business essentially um, and we really are a company that prioritizes people and planet before profit so those are our kind of aims and objectives, as it were. Um, what else? Just having a look at these questions here. The biggest accomplishment. That's a kind of um, a really nice question, actually, because it gets you to sort of reflect a little bit on what uh, our journey has been, which has been a really sort of crazy um, journey from day one. I am talking to you today from our roastery, which is based in Army, which you should be able to see behind me. Um, and, you know, this isn't where we kind of started. We, we very much started in a unit probably about five times smaller um, in Meanwood. Um, and that's kind of where we sourced our first roaster, which was a five kilo uh, machine. And obviously in the last sort of seven years, we've progressed um, from Meanwood. Uh, we had a, an interim at Leeds Dock next to our coffee shop, um, which we very swiftly outgrew as well. And we're finally, uh, our home and headquarters is now here in Army. Um, and we have the roaster, which you, I don't know if you will be able to see in the the background there, I can't work out my thing on this camera, over there. Uh, and that's a 35 kilo machine. So, um, and not only is it is the kind of size and the quantity of the coffee that we can roast uh, bigger, it also does it in a much in more environmentally clean way with using around 92,000 pounds of carbon less a year, which is something we're really, really proud of. Um, and that's been something that we were really eager to introduce to our business. Um, besides that, uh, we actually won the coffee award for the uh, Young British Foodie Competition in 2015, which was a huge achievement. We were up with up against a couple of companies from like London that had been established for a bit longer so that really felt like a, a kind of huge accomplishment for us and it kind of uh, helped put us on the map to different parts of the UK as well which was really appreciated um, and I think probably the proudest achievement is that we finally got to the point after seven years of going where we are actually setting up our own projects with some of the producers that we've curated really close relationships over the last few years and um, so we have some quality improvement projects happening in El Salvador at the moment where we're investing uh, you know financially in um, kind of infrastructure for the producer that we work with in the region of Chalatenango in El Salvador um, to help the producer that we work with Maria um, sort of try to uh, make her process more efficient and save her a bit more time and again be a bit more environmentally friendly um, so that's something that we are setting up this year and it's a two to three year plan basically so there's different phases to it which we're excited to kind of see out with Maria.
Um, we also now have a couple of projects that we support on an ongoing basis throughout the year, um, which have come about from just really sort of um, cementing the relationships that we have with the people who grow and export our coffee. Uh, one of one such project is a programme called uh, Hente del Futuro, GDF, and that is active in areas of East Africa, um, whereby children uh, of coffee farmers and women are provided access to scholarships to learn more about the coffee industry, so to improve um, sensory skills and kind of their understanding of what the buyer is looking for, for instance, to sort of take a bit more um, ownership and have a bit more agency in the transaction, essentially. So that's something that we also contribute both financially to as well as donating our time when we when we go and visit um, and when we kind of uh, undertake some of those trips. That's a really, really proud achievement of ours, I would say. Um, next question. Da, 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 da. So, what can we as a community do in terms of sustainable eating, food, animal friendly options? What can we do at home and how to get involved in our organisation? So, um, that's a, another really good question. Um, I think the whole um, sort of movement towards trying to become more conscious consumers is an incredible thing and something that we obviously are incredibly uh, happy to see. I think what's happened with COVID in the last sort of uh, few months has, has really sort of cemented the need to ask more questions about where uh, the food and drink and other products that you're buying, where they come from, understanding the provenance and the kind of uh, whether they've been sourced ethically, essentially. Um, you know, particularly there's a focus on, on buying local, which is, again, something that we really champion. Um, and I think yeah these are all really fantastic sort of initiatives that are gaining momentum within our industry um i think occasionally people can get slightly overwhelmed about the huge uh, challenge of of trying to be sustainable it's such a huge um sort of holistic approach to living and it can it can it can kind of mean changing some fairly um sort of uh, embedded habits you know which can feel a bit overwhelming so I think the biggest bit of advice we would give is to just start small and um, to sort of perhaps highlight one or two aspects of your um, weekly routine that can that you'd be happy to sort of move across to uh, maybe more uh, local or more environmentally friend friendly products um, or perhaps sourcing from companies um, like us that you know are putting a lot of time into sort of ensuring that um, you know we have complete clarity over where where um, our coffee comes from, how it's produced, how it's sourced, and ensuring that everyone in that supply chain is looked after. So I think just start small, and then hopefully the bigger changes will come. And if everyone makes those small changes, um, it will have a huge impact really on our global fight, I would say, against um, climate change and um, plastic waste and everything else. So how can you interact with North Star? Um, that's super easy. You can um, you can visit our coffee shop at Leeds Dock, North Star Coffee Shop. Um, the team there are separate to the team based in the roastery, but they are incredibly knowledgeable about coffee and they can talk confidently about everything that we've got going on as a company. Um, you can also drink our coffee in a variety of wholesale customers' um, premises across Leeds, across Yorkshire and across the UK. Um, we actually have a stockist map on our website, which is www northstarroast.com uh, where you can check out all the places that we supply and where you can find our coffee um, and finally you can buy from us online so we roast everything to order which is a fairly unique um, kind of uh, uh, part about what we do uh, we really have a, a huge focus on freshness and ensuring that um, coffee is as fresh as it possibly can be um, so rather than sort of going to your local supermarket and just picking whatever is on offer uh, do you consider sort of visiting our website we have a coffee quiz on there that you can take to sort of understand which uh, of our range might be best suited to your flavor preference um, and yeah just a whole ton of information on there that you can learn more about the coffee supply chain and um, we also post super regularly on our social media all about coffee uh, in case you're interested in learning more and you can find us on instagram at north star roast that's where you can find us um da -da -da -da. what does a kind of leads look like to you mm. Um, I think Leeds does a really good job at being kind. I think, um, you know, the particularly the the part of Leeds that we get to work within um, with North Star is the kind of independent food and drink sector. And we enjoy um, amazing sort of collaborative relationships with um, lots of businesses in that area. All I would perhaps say is that as consumers, you know, um, there there might be a need to have a, a bit of understanding about what businesses have gone through the last few months which has been incredibly traumatic um you know 
possibly the most stressful time of, of our lives, I'd say, as small business owners, um, and essentially sort of trying to constantly find the energy to come back and, you know, readapt to a new set of guidelines that we all have to meet or, or um, a new kind of uh, offering that we have to put in place to ensure our businesses are safeguarded is, is really presented a huge amount of stress and a really big challenge to a lot of people working in the industry in Leeds. Um, so generally, I would say um, go forward from today with kindness and patience in, in your interactions with people and leaves I think everyone needs a bit more uh, a bit more love uh, good reviews uh, posts on social media really positive interactions you don't understand how much they lift um, the spirits of people that are kind of frantically fighting behind the scenes just keep everything going so keep all of that love and kindness coming I would say in whatever way that you can uh, make that happen so yeah so yeah I'm Holes from North Star Coffee Roasters it's been a pleasure speaking to you today um, and I hope you enjoyed this video thanks bye Hi there, I'm Alex. I'm a green team officer for the Conservation Volunteers, or TCV, see behind me. Um, right now, I'm at our skeleton office in Sturton and Leeds, but we also have an office over in Kirkstall. Um, I've been with TCV for about three years now. I started off as a volunteer, so I was unemployed, um, I wasn't in a great place mental health-wise, and I really wanted to improve myself. But then also, I care about my local community and environment, so I thought, why don't I go here at TCB. So the aims of our organisation, TCB, the main aims are to improve community, so it's getting people together that might live two doors down and getting them out um, and improving their local environment, so their local green spaces. It could just be a small little park, a flower bed in, but you get a real sense of community when you pull together and make something look really beautiful. Um, but we also want to improve individuals as well, so people's health and well-being. Um, is, a, is a major drive of the green chip. So if someone's feeling a bit, a bit down, a bit dumps, getting outside into nature, there's a huge connection to um, positive mental health, positive, positive thoughts, and just being outside in nature. And your physical health is massively improved as well. From doing no exercise at all, to doing just a little bit, really good. We also offer lots of uh, short courses, um, which, which help develop people's skills. So if anyone's worried about future employment and they think, I really want to do something in the conservation sector, but I don't really have any skills, we offer a lot of training and a lot of uh, short courses to help with conservation management skills, woodworking skills, gardening skills, um, the list goes on. But yeah, we're all about improving individuals and their local. So, what can we do as a community in terms of sustainable eating? So, I've got to say, I work in the green gym. One of the main things is grow some food. So, instead of going to the supermarket and getting a sack of potatoes, if you've just got a, a potato grow bag or something like that in the garden or an allotment, or even if, even if you've just got a tiny little square of concrete uh, outside your house, you can have a grow bag or grow your own herbs as well. It really, really exciting meal. Um, but another thing is, when you're going to your, to your vegan shop, don't buy too much food. Have, have proper portion sizes. Try and throw as little food away as possible. So try and grow some food, and then try not to throw as much food away. Because that food could have gone somewhere else. So, how to get involved with TCD? Um, the best way would be to go to our website or one of the Facebook pages and look if there's something going on in your area. There's loads of green things um, across Leeds and there's always something going on. Um, so our website is tcv.org.uk and there's a list of drop down menu there that'll tell you things going on in your area and you'll give us a call, lovely girl called here's a little pick up and she'll tell you everything you need to know. So initially when you come to volunteer you might do one day a week, just with one of the green gyms as a volunteer. But there are more opportunities. You can, if you've got more spare time, you can do a bit more training and become a volunteer officer, which is almost like a, an unpaid staff position, which is what how I how I started with TCB. 
So you get a lot more responsibility, but you gain a lot of confidence and you learn a lot more as well. While you, whilst you're teaching others, I found personally, whilst I was teaching people things, I learned a lot as well. What is the most important thing we can all do to be kinder to our planet? I think food waste is really important. At the moment, I, I think a lot, um, especially in England, a lot of our food produce gets thrown away. Which, if you're growing your own produce in an allotment or a garden, if you get any wonky carrots or any knobby potatoes, you can still eat them. A lot of the time in the supermarkets, those, those foods get uh, thrown away. It's really, really big shame. You could go on some other way. But then also litter as well, I think. That's something that really upsets me personally. At the moment, a few of our green gyms, we've been doing litter picks around um, the communities that they're in. And a lot of the time, we'll do a litter pick, we'll come back the next week and there'll just be more rubbish. And it's it's really sad because it, it makes a space that could be really beautiful, a really beautiful green space. It just makes it look like a dump, really. It's, it's not very nice. And it's dangerous for certain animals as well. I'm sure you've all seen pictures of uh, birds getting stuck in beer rings and things like that. So, yeah, I think not littering and maybe growing a bit of your food. That's how it can be to our planet. What does a kind of leads look like to me? So a kind of leads to me, I think if we look at it more on a community level, I think if all the communities in Leeds pull together, so if if there's a green space near you, say, and you individually go out and try and improve that green space with, with some friends or just someone that you know, a family member, then that will in turn improve Leeds. If all of Leeds improves at the same time, it's going to look really nice. So, yeah, you can you can join the Green Gym and help improve your local green spaces. If you look up uh, tcv.org.uk or on our Facebook pages, there's Skeleton Grange Environment Centre or TCV Hollybush. So Skeleton Grange is the South Leeds one and Hollybush is the sort of North uh, West one um, but yeah, we'd be more than happy to to have you and you got to do it for me very soon. Thank you very much for your time.